Hi friends, it's Yana here today and I am here today for a really fun project. I am super excited about it and I think you will be as well. Uh, today we're going to use the free classic PJ pattern uh, by Ellie and Mac and we're going to try to turn the woven top version into a shacket. I'm super excited about it. Not only is this pattern free, but it's also very super awesome and it is super easy to sew. So I think this is gonna be an awesome project. So let's get started. I'm going to be changing a couple of things of the pattern. Most of the, everything is going to be sewn the same. The pattern's gonna stay the same. So all you have to do is print out the pattern and get to it. Um, but I am adding two different things. I am going to add woven cuffs because of the, I want it to look more like a shirt than PJs. This pattern right now just has a um, fold and hem option, um, but I wanna add some cuffs just just for the heck of it. You don't have to if you don't want to. I think it still look awesome without them. Um, and then I also, number two, want to add a chest pocket because chest pockets are easy to add and they add a lot of character to a top. So I might do two chest pockets. I'm not really sure. We'll see when we get there. So that those are the two things that I'm doing. I am using this gorgeous flannel fabric from Olga's Closet. Um, I'm super excited about it. Now, if you have not downloaded this pattern, the pattern uh, link will be in, under the description. So go grab it because once again, it's free and it is awesome. You want it. So I already cut out my whole pattern, except for I did not cut out my sleeves yet <clears throat> because I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do to make my cuff. Um, this pattern is a... Uh, as a um, size expansive pattern. So what that means is that it is, it's more of a straight fit uh, for more of an expensive fit. So there are two cut lines on the pattern sleeve. There is a cut line for uh, five five, and there's a cut line for five ten. Now I am somewhere in between. Between between, I'm somewhere in between because I'm a five seven. So it's a half an inch per inch. So if I start at five five, and I'm two inches taller than that, five seven, that's really only one inch. So I'm kind of in the middle right there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my sleeve at a five five because then I'm going to add the cuff. And I, I think I'm gonna make a two inch cuff. I think that'll be good enough. And if for some reason, listen, I'm just kind of doing this, just trying to figure it all out. If at the end of this sew, and I, and I tell you this every time that you're looking and you're watching any of my hack videos, if something turns out not quite right and you're like, I wish that was lower or I wish the cuff was longer or I wish the pocket was bigger or whatever, that's good because then now you you are learn from me and my mistakes and then you can do it better when you get to doing it because i know you're going to do it with me but i'm going to start at the five five and then i'm going to add a two inch cuff so it's going to be a little bit longer it's going to be a, about an inch longer than i need it to be but I, again, want that oversized look of a shacket. So that's why I'm going with a little bit longer. But if you want it to fit just right, I would go with your height and take off the two inches that are going to uh, make the cuff. Now remember, you also will have seam allowance. So you won't quite take two inches off. You need a, a quarter inch seam allowance or however much seam allowance you're adding to it. Um, so take a blah, 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 blah. Take that into consideration as well. I know some people say I talk too fast. I'm trying not to talk too fast, but sometimes I'm just, I'm so excited. I just want to tell you all what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut my sleeve and then I'm gonna tell you how I'm gonna cut that cuff. All right, so my sleeve is basically cut, but I am not removing it because I want to see how long the sleeve is because that's what I'm going to do to cut my cuff. Now, I want to cut my cuff two inches, um, but like I said, we need seam allowance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut four cuffs, four cuffs, because I want, um, I'm going to sew them right sides together and so they're going to be, so you know, you can see them right sides together, so you're gonna sew them together. So there's gonna be two on each hand. And then not only that, but I'm going to, here, let me draw a picture, because that's what I need to do. I need to draw a picture for my mind. 
All right, so let's say this is my cuff and this is gonna be two inches by width of sleeve. Okay, so I've got a two inch by at the width of the sleeve. Now, because this is going to be sewn together, you need seam allowance all the way around it. So I'm gonna add a quarter inch seam allowance or however much seam allowance you want all the way around it. Now, when it's sewn to each other, it, we're just gonna sew the sides and the bottom, but the top is going to be sewn onto the actual sleeve. So you need seam allowance at the top as well. Now, when I'm gonna sew it to the sleeve, I want to have like, probably, uh, I, I wanna have a good seam allowance so that I can sew it to the sleeve. So I might just go ahead and do a half an inch seam allowance around the whole thing, and then just trim down the seam allowance. When I sew the cuff, because it is woven, I'm gonna sew it on my sewing machine, so I can do that half an inch seam allowance and then just trim the excess to fit to my sleeve because we want it to be the same width of the sleeve so that you can sew it onto the sleeve. But you wanna make sure that you have the seam allowance there uh, to be able to sew it on. So I always rather just add an extra seam allowance than not enough. So if I'm adding half an inch here and half an inch here, so I'm gonna go extra, so I gotta measure my sleeve. <clears throat> and my, the bottom of my sleeve and then go an inch wider. And then since I'm going to do two inches, the width of the height of it, so then I'm gonna do actually three inches high, three inches tall, whatever, whatever the wording is. So I hope that makes sense. So that's what I'm doing. All right, there they are. That took way longer than it needed to, um, to get cut, but it's done. Okay, now the other thing I told you I wanted to do was the pockets. So we're gonna work on that too. I'm gonna grab my front bodice and we're just gonna lay it out in front of us. And we're just gonna see how big we want that pocket to be. Okay, so I'm thinking that um, some scissors. Okay, so I'm thinking, I'm just gonna use this piece of paper right here that I already have to create a pattern piece. All right, so we don't want the pocket to be too small. That looks a little small, or maybe not, because it's right in the middle. But we also don't want the pocket to be too big. So, hmm. This is gonna be the color piece. You're gonna put it somewhere around here. So we can go ahead and make it this size, I think. I'm not sure. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? It's harder to do this, um, to sew the top first and then add the pocket, but I think I'm gonna do that because I wanna get it placed just right and I want it to be just the right size. I don't want it to be too small. So. I'm gonna do this for you all. I'm just going to do it myself like this. And then whenever I tell you the measurements at the end, then you can just cut it and place it yourself. But um, usually the pocket, you want it to be like right here. So it's right, basically almost right along with that seam right here. Um, it just all depends on where you like a pocket um, and then how big you want that pocket. But now remember when we're going to make this pocket, you need to add uh, quarter inch or half an inch, however much, all around it, the, the sides, the bottom. And then on the top, you wanna add like maybe, a, well that was a lot, maybe an inch, because usually we fold that in and we top stitch, so it has that nice lip that usually all pockets have, so remember that. Also, when you go to cut your pocket, what I think it's really neat when you're doing a um, one of these shirts is usually the pocket is cut on the, like, it's biased. It's kind of called cut sideways, like, like so. So that way it has like a different contrast of the pattern on the shirt. So that's another really cool thing. Um, and it's really cool because then you don't have to worry about stripe matching either. So that's... Fun. Now, one more thing that we need to do for that cuff 
is when we go to attach the cuff, we at the at the sleeve we're gonna cut a little slit um, so that it opens wider. So it's not just the cuff attached to it. Um, we're gonna open a little slit. So we have to have a little strip, and I'm thinking like an inch and a half. I'm not really sure how long though. So we're just gonna make a little strip, a two inch strip, two inch by uh like three inches because we're gonna cut out like maybe two inches right here and then we're gonna put that like binding on it um so i'm, gonna, I'm just gonna cut it two inches by like three inches because we can always trim fabric off we'll sew it on and then any extra that's hanging out we'll just trim off so there are two little pieces like this all right, let's get to sewing. We'll start by sewing our shoulders together, right sides together. Once we sew those together, we're gonna steam that seam open and we're gonna go in and put in a basting stitch all around the neckline. So just a long straight stitch all around the neckline so the neckline doesn't stretch out as we're trying to sew it. All right, make sure those shoulder seams are flat out. I just didn't even stop to come and, and do it. I just opened them up when I was sewing over them. Probably not the best technique, but you all know I'm just all about going quickly. All right, once those seams are flat, we're gonna grab our sleeve and attach it. Just fold it and find that middle. And then we're gonna attach it right sides together, front to the front and back to the back. There is a mark on your pattern, so I just made my mark on there so I know that this is for my back. And we're just putting it right sides together, starting at that shoulder seam. All right, while I was at it, when I sewed my sleeves on afterwards, I just went ahead and sewed that raw edge together with my serger to finish those edges. You can do that with a serger or you can do it with your sewing machine. It's just so that it doesn't fry on me. And now we're gonna prep these cuffs. We're gonna grab them and place them right sides together like I told you earlier we were going to do. And we're going to sew uh, the top, bottom, and up. But actually, before we do that, I wanna grab my iron and fold that first one of them down half an inch, which is our seam allowance or whatever it is that you use the seam allowance to give me like a crease to know where I'm going to sew that onto my actual sleeve, if that makes sense. It's kind of like a memory crease. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and sew them right sides together. Where you created that memory crease, don't sew that top part. You're just gonna sew the sides and the top and the bottom. If that makes sense. All right, so we're also going to prep these little things. I should have left my ironing board up so I can show you. Okay, first we're gonna fold them in half, wrong sides together. Then we're gonna fold the two edges into itself. Then we're gonna fold them in half. I'm gonna do the same for the other one. All right, once this is prepped, I'm gonna grab my sleeve. Here's my sleeve. Now, you can either do this first or you can do it after you sew, after you, after you sew the sides together. Um, but you're going to, cause you're gonna sew the sides together next. And we kind of want to figure out where you want that sleeve to open. So like you want to kind of like, um, this is the front of my shirt. This is my front side. And you want it kind of like right next. So like if you're looking at your hand and this is your sleeve, you kind of want it like to open right here is where your cuff is usually gonna open. Somewhere around here is what I think, right? So that seam right here is gonna be like on the inside right here. So you wanna go a little bit off center. So like about two inches off the edge. So that would be like right around here. 
So if you can see, this is my seam, this is the front of my sleeve. So like right about here is where I'm going to make my cut to add my facing so that my cuff opens up. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so what I can do now is before I open it, so I'm gonna go two inches, two and a half inches away from my seam, and I'm going to cut, oh, where is my ruler? Here it is. I'm gonna cut about two inches up. There's two inches. Let's do two and a half inches, okay? So there's my cut. And uh, here at the edge, I'm just gonna go out like a tiny bit, like a quarter inch. So it's just two little, we're gonna do, let me put it over this paper because my mat is kind of messy. So we cut a long straight line and then what the point we went out a quarter inch so that way you can straighten it out like this. So then we're gonna grab this little person here, find the center and place that center right sides together. You're gonna open it up, right sides together over that piece. And we're gonna go all the way to the edge. And then we're gonna come back on the other way and go all the way to the edge the other way. And we're gonna sew it on. Okay, because then we're gonna come back and close that together and that's gonna be like your uh, little piece right here on your sleeve and then the cuff is gonna be attached to that. But you'll have this little opening right here and that's where the cuff is going to come together right here at this opening. Hope that makes sense. We're gonna do the same for the other side. All right, we'll sew that on. And while we're over there, we'll also go ahead and sew our sides, right sides together. Now, again, you can take it one step at a time. Like if you wanna go ahead and do your, um, your sides first, sew your sides first and then sew your, do your coffee thing that I just did, your coffee, your cuff thing that I just did, that is up to you. I'm just doing everything at the same time just because I, you all know that's how I am, I just kind of do it all at once. But, and with clips, I feel like it's much easier to do it all at once because they kind of keep things together better than if I was doing it with uh, pins. So I'll probably just pin my shirt all the way, like my sleeve, like to like right about elbow length and then go do this and then come back and um, pin the rest of it before I sew it. it. Might be easier, I'm not sure. You could also add side pockets here at this step. Um, they, we do have a video here on our YouTube channel on how to add pockets to something that has a side seam on it. So you can add a pocket to that as well. And it would work excellent. Alrighty, coming together. Again, on those side seams, I did the same thing. Um, I finished the raw edges with my serger. Um, so now what we're going to do is, here is the sleeve. And <clears throat> where I have that piece that I put over, I'm going to fold it. I'm going to push that seam allowance towards the edge of it. And then I'm gonna fold it in half and then fold it right over like so. And then I'm gonna pin it and top stitch it together to finish it off. Do that to both. Listen y'all, I am a mess and a half. I did one from the outside and one from the inside. It does not matter. It's all right. I'm just gonna sew it together here at the edge once I'm done to kind of give it a close up. But don't worry about it if you did that Okay, now I'm going to uh, finish the raw edge of my shirt and hem at a half an inch uh, all the way around. So I'll do that. 
and I'm also going to my cuffs I'm gonna prep them by trimming the seam allowance like we talked about around the edges and stuff however much you want to trim and then we're going to flip them and steam them to have them ready for the next step and we're actually going to do the same thing with our color we're gonna prep our color too I'm just gonna prep everything if you want a more like detailed version of this uh, pajama sew you actually want to go check out this the pajama uh, sewing tutorial this one I'm trying to get by so that I can make those adjustments that we talked about making for our uh, for our making it into a shacket so here is the color I'm gonna put them right sides together and I'm basically doing the same thing that I did with the sleeves where I'm gonna sew the side up over down leave this bottom side open okay and while we're at it too if you want to you don't have to because that step is coming soon but not yet where did I leave my facing hmm here it is we can grab our facing of the front and our back facing and we'll put our back facing face up here on our mat and we'll put our back our front facing right on top and sew those shoulder seams together so we're just kind of prepping everything this is the last thing that we have to prep and then now we just got to finish up and put it all together actually the pockets we haven't talked about pockets but we're going to do those at the end um, just so I can make sure where I want to put my pocket on after I try it on and everything all right so let's do that and then once I sew that the inside of my of this right here my facing I, you can go ahead and finish it off like with a serger or with this zigzag stitch on your sewing machine whatever you want to do so it's not going to fray on you why I used white thread I'm not really sure but it doesn't matter and like I said right here in the corner we're gonna fold it right sides together this is the wrong side of my fabric and we're going to kind of give it like a little top stitch here to top stitch that close so that it sticks on the inside when you open it see how it's gonna stick right there on the inside and kind of overlaps itself right there and then your cuff will come right on top of that kind of cool okay there is that one that was sewn on the inside and the other one was sewn on the outside I don't know that I see a ton of difference where's my other sleeve so I can show you so this one I stitched on the outside and this one I stitched from the inside so like right sides together wrong sides together and there's not much of a difference this is up to you however you want to do that all right now we're gonna grab that collar and we're gonna do again the same thing that we did to our cuffs which is trim that seam allowance especially on the points pointy points points and then turn it right side out and steam it so we can get it ready for sewing I use only the best of tools like the pencil now for your facing you also want to add some interfacing right along the edge about a quarter a half an inch 1.5 inch interfacing right here um, because that's going to reinforce your uh, can't see me that's going to reinforce the fabric right here where you're going to attach your buttons anyway let me go find some interfacing and add it and then we're going to attach the color and everything and we're almost done and the and the cuffs and then uh, then we'll have to talk about pockets all right we're gonna grab our shirt again and we're going to actually baste our color on so I'm gonna grab my shoulder seams put them together and mark my half of my neck and I'm going to grab my collar now this is my these are not my colors make sure you grab your color not your sleeve things and I would I would do that 
mark the half of your color and we're gonna place it right sides together with our neck and we're going to pin it on and then we're going to baste it on. Now the color doesn't come all the way to the edge of your shirt. So if you're getting to the step and you're like, my color doesn't, you're fine. It's not supposed to because this is an easy way to do a color button up lapel area shirt. I don't think that made any sense, but just bear with me. Okay, now the, the cuffs, we're gonna cut out that excess little fabric that we had. Okay, we're gonna grab our cuff. You know where we folded that half an inch? That is going to be sewn to the sleeve right sides together. So around that whole edge with that folded side. all the way around it needs to fit and if it doesn't it's my fault i didn't do my calculations correctly but it does oh it's gonna be like a hallelujah right now it fits as long as you kept your seam allowance correctly it should fit and then we're gonna sew that on at the same time because then we're gonna flip it over flip it under top stitch it <gasps> How awesome. Y'all, yes I know, I am too much. Let's do it. Make sure when you're sewing the cuffs, you do not sew the other side. You only want to sew the one that you're attached. The one that you folded in half. That's it. Sorry, not the one that you folded in half. The one that you folded that half an inch. Because then you're going to fold that seam up and you're going to grab the other side and you're going to sew it right on top. Fold that other part right in half and a quarter inch again and sew it, close it up again. But I'll show you that more close up over there when I do it. Now we'll base that color on. Now listen, I am sitting here doing this sewing tutorial and trying to show you how to do some hacks and things like that, but I want you to know that I really am no expert at it. Um, I make mistakes and I uh, kind of learn from my mistakes and I, I'd like to come here and just show you all my process because I think hopefully it can help someone else who might be intimidated and think that they can't do it to know that they can, that I can do it. You surely can. Um, so I know there's been some mistakes on here and you might have noticed uh, like the fact that I did one one way and the other one the other way uh, on the sleeve thing or just different little things. But I want you to know that that's how we learn. We just keep going and um, that's how we're going to learn. So if you are feeling like I cannot do that, that is too hard, that is too much, I want you to know that you can do it. I know you can. So don't be intimidated and please, please, please do it with me. I feel like watching a video makes everything seem so much easier um, it, and it makes it seem like that person's got it all together and I can't. But Honestly, I, I know you can. This is, this is something you can do if we take it one step at a time. And that's why I like to come on here and do all these little things because I wanna show you all cause that even I who make every single mistake possible can finish a great product, a good garment at the end of this. You can too and you probably do way better than I can because my problem is I just kinda go for it and I don't take my time and think, I just do it. But. With that being said, learn from my mistakes and so you can do better. We're gonna grab the facing. I'm gonna fold it in half on the neck so I can find where my middle piece is. And I'm gonna paste that right over my collar at that middle point of my collar. And we're gonna go all the way around with this facing. Now the facing should get, right, that one should meet right at the edge. I know the color didn't, but the facing should go all the way to the edge of your uh, shirt as long as you kept your seam allowances correctly and everything everything should match up and going right up the front 
and then the same for the other side. All right, now you know you already hemmed your shirt. So at the bottom of your shirt where that uh, is, you're going to fold it that facing up to match the hem. Because when you finish sewing this way, you're gonna come over and hem basically take it down, tap it down to the hem right there. Bloop. So that way when you turn it around, it'll be, it'll be stuck to that basically. <laughs> You know, that's probably not the way correct way of saying it, but that's basically what's gonna do. So you're gonna sew it while it's folded. Now for our cuffs, we're going to open them up and that seam allowance is gonna get folded up towards the cuff and this bot this edge of the cuff, you're gonna fold it half an inch in, that half an inch allowance we put in, and we're gonna fold it right over See that seam right there where we already sewed up? Right over that seam. You'll need pins for this one. Because you're gonna get you're gonna pin it here on the inside. And then we're going to sew it, top stitch it on. And then you can go ahead and top stitch along the whole cuff to give it a really nice coffee look. It's gonna be so cute. Then we'll be able to put our button and buttonhole right there, and we have a cuff. Now, like I said, you could have made this cuff a little bit bigger if you wanted to. It just depends on how big you want the cuff to be. This is a little bit smaller than the regular cuff. I think I could have made it a little bit bigger, but that's okay. That's where learning from my mistakes comes in. You learn from my mistakes. <laughs> you can make it about probably an inch wider would even be good too. N not wider, I mean longer. The width is the same because it's gonna the width is gonna fit into the cuff, but the length is how how tall it's gonna be. Now we turn everything around. Actually, we can go ahead and trim those corners first before we turn it around. And you can even trim those corners at the bottom of the shirt. And then turn it and steam it. Then if you want to, you can go ahead and understitch, which is sewing that seam, that that seam right there onto the facing so it doesn't come up when you're wearing it so it stays in there or which I might do probably not right now because I still have white thread on my machine and I don't know if I want to do that or not um, just go all the way around and top stitch the whole thing which also will give it more of a shirt look finished shirt look by top stitching everything. You know what, I made a mistake. I wasn't supposed to sew that first because now the hem doesn't fit. So I'm gonna tear out that when I went sideways here, I wasn't supposed to do that. What did I do with my seam ripper? See, y'all, I make mistakes all the time, but I wanna tell you that because I showed it wrong. I don't know where my seam ripper is, but I'm gonna rip that stitch right there off don't really need a seam ripper, it's just a stitch. And so then, when I fold it over, now I'm going to sew it here, where my, where I already hemmed. And this is a funny thing right here. This is another mistake, if you can see that right there, it's like a little patch. When I went to do my sleeve cuff thing, I cut the wrong side. I cut the shirt instead of cutting my sleeve. You know, when I cut the little trim thing, and so I put a little patch on there because it's cut. So I made a little like patch thing so that it um, doesn't come unravel on me and ruin my whole project. That's okay. Not many people will be able to tell and if they're able to tell, this is a shacket which is supposed to be cool and just hip and it has little 
mistakes on it and that's okay. That's okay. Right? That is a-okay in my book. All right, so then that piece right there ends up being hemmed. So again, you can go around the whole thing and top stitch, which is what I'll eventually do. I might not do it right now, but that's what I'm going to do. And then you can go ahead and do your buttons, which I will eventually also do. I don't have buttons yet that I'm going to use, so I probably won't be able to do the buttons today. Wham. If you want to see me do buttons and explain how I do buttons in my machine, you can check out the sewing tutorial for the A-line skirt. Uh, you could also remove all these basting stitches that you used right here. Um, the A-line skirt has buttons on it and I do show that on that video, the buttons. All right, so we are almost done. Now don't judge it, I'm wearing it with this, <laughs> all these other patterns. So I'll try it on later at the end with a solid top so you can see how cute it really does look. Okay. So we are done basically. Um, we, so I also went, I haven't put buttons on yet, but I just kind of basted it together to see what it would look like. Um, and I'll do the buttons. Then I, what I did is I went and top stitched all the way around, like the color on the outside of the color, all the way around the whole thing. Even the, um, that I did say the color about the whole thing and then here at the front I went and top stitched about an inch and a half in kind of where that uh, facing stops so it doesn't come up and you know dress shirts or shackets usually have that so that's why I went ahead and did that and I wanted to kind of try out one pocket before I came and showed you how to do it so I've got one pocket on now you can talk all you want about how big you want that pocket or how you want it to face or which way you want it to look. But when it comes down to it, if you only have a little bit of fabric left, you have to use what you have. And this was the only, the biggest piece of fabric I had left. So here it is. And I tried to cut it a little bit off so it would look off, but I didn't have enough to turn it quite all the way, you know? Um, so it kind of looks a little off, but not all the way. That's okay, you can, if you have enough fabric, you can make it look like it's supposed to look. But this pocket is, let me measure it, because I don't even remember how I, I how big it is. Um, one, two, three, four, five and a half by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So five and a half by seven, because that's how much I could get out of it. I literally put a piece of paper, as a rectangle piece of paper, and then I tried to go as as wide as possible with my ruler as I could. Um, but I think it's okay. It could be a tiny bit bigger, but I think it's good. So I'm gonna show you what I did. All right, y'all, seeing that pocket in the video, it does look a little funky because it looks like it's only just a little bit off. It's not an off-off that it like makes an impact. It's just a little bit off that people are gonna be like, did she mean to do that? It's a little crooked. But I'm hoping that the other pocket being just a little bit off as well will give my hint that yes, I meant to do that. Oh well, I don't have enough fabric anyways to fix it. I don't think I do. I might fix it later if I do have enough fabric or uh, do something different, a different color, or just take them off all together. I'm not sure. I'll finish it up and see how it looks. It's fine either way. I'm not worried about it, so don't worry about it. It's good. <laughs> Hopefully you have more fabric than I did. Okay, so now I've got my pocket, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to steam those down, those sides. And I, again, it's super easy to put a pocket on. I'm going to steam those sides at a quarter inch. The only reason why I'm doing a quarter inch is because my pocket is already pretty small, so I don't wanna take any more than I have to. You can go on and finish those raw edges if you want first. Um, with a serger or uh, zigzag stitch on your sewing machine if you want to do that. I'm not. I'm just going for it again. And then the top, I'm going to fold it down a whole inch. Okay, so then the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and top stitch that top down right there to give it that look right here like a pocket. I don't think you can even tell because it's the same color. But 
Now we need to figure out where we want that pocket. And what I did is I tried it on in front of the mirror and figured out exactly where I, like I pinned it onto myself, not myself, onto my shirt. This one, I pinned onto my shirt and that was the first thing I did to figure out where I wanted this one. So now for the, for the other one, I'm just gonna place them together. So here's my shirt put together and I'm just gonna go right at the same spot on the other side. So it's about, I put it about three inches from the edge. So three inches from the edge. And then the height, since there is, the lines match up, thankfully, I can't believe it. I didn't really even try very hard because you all know I'm not the best at it. I'm going to just kind of match them up. So I can kind of see where the lines are and I'm just matching them up. Okay, now it's gonna look a little bit off because this goes over. So if you want to, cause buttons are here. So if you want to go from the actual edge, it's about an inch from the actual edge. So you can bring that closer. So it actually looks more even. I hope that makes sense. Cause the buttons are gonna go right here. It's up to you where you wanna place it. There is no placement of pocket in this pattern because there is no pocket in this pattern. We're just kind of making it up as we go. And then we're just going to sew it on. And all we're doing is we're sewing starting here at the top and I'm going to do a back stitch back and forth, back and forth right here at the stop to reinforce it, go down, go over, come up. And when we come up here again, I'm going to do a back and forth, back and forth up here to reinforce it. <laughs> I love it. I just love, love, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I just love it. I think it turned out amazing. Super cute, super trendy, super free pattern. Go grab it. Come back and sew it with me. I think the pockets are just fine. Um, they're a little bit off center, but they're both a little bit off center, so I'm good to go. I'm pairing it with a um, straight fit tee, a uh, basic tee, I love it, and some jeans, and I'm ready to go out and just enjoy a cool day, just running errands, having fun. I love it. Let me know below what you think. Did you, do you like it as much as I do? Um, are you going to add buttons or are you going to keep the buttons off? What should I do? Should I go ahead and add buttons? I mean, I'll probably wear it on button most of the time. Um, I don't think I'm even going to button it. And then the fact that I basted the cuffs, I could just literally put a button on there and just pretend like I have buttons. You wouldn't tell anyone, would you? Because I'm not going to tell anyone if you don't tell anyone. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't so you never miss any of our other tutorials. I hope that this tutorial has taught you a little bit of something, if, even if it's just the fact that you can so do this. Um, I, I'm not the best sewist. I struggle. I make mistakes. Um, we just learn to overcome those mistakes and just fix our own little mistakes and make it into something beautiful. Um, mistakes are um, happy accidents, right? <laughs> so um, don't be intimidated by a sew and think that you can't do it because I know you can. Um, come and join me. We'll do it together one step at a time. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all next time. Bye!